What's going on, everybody? It's Matt Faircloth. Welcome, welcome to the Mentorship Monday program. My name is Matt, and my company is called the DeRosa Group. Let me bring in my co-host, Justin Fraser. Justin, who is our guest today? Who's the lucky candidate to oh, be here to pick our brain? Barbara Freund is here with us today. I'm so excited. Barbara is a friend of mine. Barbara, come on in. Barbara. Barbara, Barbara and I were texting uh, right. over the weekend, and I said, Barbara, you have to come on Mentorship Monday. Please, please, please. So here you are. How are you doing, man? I'm doing really good. I'm excited to be with my two my two fellows over hey, here. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's awesome to have sure. you to have you here too, Barbara. Great to see you. What can we do, man? Hop into the brains, pick away. How can we brighten your day, man? What's up? All right. So my boyfriend has a property that he owns in Philadelphia. He currently has it mortgaged. Mm -hmm. um, owes around three seventy. Um, okay. like a little bit lower than that. And it's current market value. Um, I'm sure you kind of see it on the screen is between like 445 and 475. Um, okay. we're currently working with another real estate investor friend of mine who's doing like a lease purchase option. He's going to be giving us around 20,000 down. We're under, I think three month contract, uh, for him to then find another like tenant buyer situation that kind of kind of deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and he's also going to be paying us monthly um, 2500 It would rent for around 2500 to 2700 somewhere around in there. Mm -hmm. I just want to know that it's like kind of our best move. It's a very sizable house. It's 2500 or 400 I believe, if I'm not wrong on those numbers. And it's a four mm -hmm. bed, three bath. And I like, I don't know, I get in my head about it because I'm like, it's such a big house. What if we like rented each room out because it's kind of like a younger neighborhood or something mm -hmm. like that. So I was just thinking, you know, if all that equity sitting there. You ain't doing that during COVID, man. Yeah. Mm. Right now. No, you're not doing it. You had to rent to the room during COVID. Come on, man. Yeah, you know, true. who's doing that? Who's signing on that? Who's signing that contract? You know, I don't think it's a big deal. I, I would do that if I were that age, whatever, you know, who, well, who I was thinking, the reason I was thinking it might be a good opportunity is because so many people are probably downsizing. You know, they're moving from more expensive neighborhoods and going into something that they can maybe afford because of a loss of income or something like that. That's why I was kind of going with it. But Do you all live there? Do you and your boyfriend live in the in the property now? We were, yeah. Okay, um, so did he live there two of the last three years or two of the last five years? Um, he has two of the last five years. Okay, good enough. Um, all right, why would you do this lease option thing? Why? This sounds complicated. Why are we doing it? At the end of it, it looks like we would net the most if we were to sell this way rather than go through like a traditional broker. So you're saving the, the, the broker fee. Is that it? Like, are they committed? Have they committed with this lease option? Have they committed a purchase price to you? Um, yes, it's okay. three, I'm sorry, four sixty five, I think. All right. All right. Now we're talking. Okay. Now we're talking 90 grand. Okay. Um, and it's tax free. The reason I asked it, and for, for our listeners, the reason why I asked if Barbara's boyfriend had lived in the property for two of the last five years is because uh, when he liquidates his property, he'll get to keep all the proceeds tax free. Um, because, uh, oh, yeah, you see, look at that face. I didn't realize. Oh, you didn't that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a thing, that, man. 90 grand is like a shot oh, of heroin into your veins, man. I mean, it's like you're going to have to, yeah, you got to figure what to do with that. Right. Cause yeah. that's going to be like, Oh shit, look at this. And if you got, if you're going to give half of that away to the man, that's a big conversation. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you might even have to give 30 to 40 grand of the way uh, away of that in tax. Right. But if you get to keep all of it tax free because it was his primary residence it uh, was, yeah. at some point, right. That's a huge thing, man. So yeah. um, to everybody talking and watching like what to do about taxes is a big question. When you talk about selling property, um, it should be your, that should be a part of the calculation, but because you live there, you guys get to keep it tax free. Now, there's another reason why you want to sell sooner than later. If it goes so long to where he did, has not lived in the property for two out of the last five, let's say he moved out like, you know, four years ago. Right. And mm -hmm. you want to keep cash flowing it then he can no longer sell it tax free. That makes it a, a, a way bigger thing. And yeah, you can do a 1031 exchange. Right. So there is a window where two out of the last five, two out of the last five plays, if that makes sense. And you want to sell it in that window so he can keep all the money tax free. Yeah. That so you can sense. only have been out of that house maximum for three years okay. by the time you sell it. Right. Yep. 
Okay. Okay. And I, and I said, this will also be a time to state that Justin and I are not certified public accountants to talk about tax evasion. You should talk to a local CPA. I'm not, talking, not talking to you, talking to all of our listeners. You guys should talk to a local CPA before you just take mine and Justin's advice. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, right. so the situation here, Barbara, you have committed to this lease option buyer or like what, where are you just on the, about to make a decision or where are we in the process? We're committed to it. Um, but he's someone that I've known for many years and he, if we were to back out, he would be acceptant of that. Okay. We've committed to it for three months. Yeah. Okay. This is How long have you been out of the house? We've been out of the house since the 1st of September. So. Oh, okay. So just a week. Yeah. All right. So, so you could really have two, ten, two and a half years and be more than comfortable from a tax perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you gave that option, I'd be concerned if you had, you said, why a does he need a lease option? Why can't he just get a mortgage and buy it? Why does he need a lease option? Uh, because he's going to be selling it to another tenant buyer. He's oh, he's straddling the deal. So he's going to take it from y'all at 465 and then, or and then wrap around okay. mortgage and then sell it for more. I would want to get a chunk of that if I were you. I would I would lower the 475 or 465 or whatever it is to 450 and say, okay, I want a percentage of whatever, whatever your upsale is. Because there, to me, and I, I've sold, I sold a few houses in Kensington that were smaller than this, less bedrooms for more money than you're talking about right now. That, well, that are not, not as a premium yeah. neighborhood on the other side of the L. Okay. You know, I know so I'm talking Philly talk. You know what I'm talking about. Wait, right? wait, wait. On the other side of the L? The, the, on the other side. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Side. The other side of the tracks. Yes. <laughs> Let's see that. Yes, yes man. <laughs> New construction, man. Oh, New okay. construction. Right. But no, not for nothing, man. Listen, that F fish town's the spot, right? Yeah. You know? Well, Barbara, how old is this house? I don't it's think you said told us today. Yeah, it's two years. It's a it's only two year old house. house. Yeah. It's still right. under warranty. In Philly, you got to do a two and ten. It's 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 got a it's still yeah, got it's a, still about like years. an abatement and a bunch of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You got yeah, something going on there. That's not four. I'm not saying four fifty or whatever is not the number, but uh, have you and your boyfriend run really deep comps, or at least talk to a realtor about what the property may be worth? The realtor that he was actually using um, had put us at. For 65. That's where mm. we got that number from was mm. the realtor that he had it listed with for a little while. And then um, mm. my friend approached mm. us and then we kind of did the numbers mm -hmm. and ended up getting out of that contract with her. It's a win for you guys. It's a win for you guys. But I would, I just would be careful that he's not going to put it up on the street and get like 580 for it. I mean, you never know, not for nothing, right? Maybe I'm wrong. I probably am. You know, I don't know Fishtown that well. I just know I did some stuff not in Fishtown further away. So uh, Natalie Vane, if someone's experience, experience thinks that they can make money wrapping your deal, why can't you just do that and sell to the end buyer and keep some of the extra profit? Never sell to a middleman unless you, unless, unless you think they're making a mistake. Good point. This is a friend of yours. I get it. And we want to help friends out, but not for nothing. This is not a, this is not a not for profit that you guys are running. You guys are in business and you, your boy, it's your boyfriend's property. He deserves the right as the owner of the property to make as much as he can on that property. Yeah, so my guess is your wraparound man is not going to make, he wouldn't be going through all that and taking all that risk if he was going to make 5,000 bucks on the wraparound deal. Yeah. You know, he's going to make, like multiple, like, like in, in the mid five figures, that's, that's, I would require something like that. If I was going to do a deal like that, put yourself in his shoes. How much profit would you have to make to put yourself at risk to go and be obligated to pay you guys a rent payment every month until his buyer comes around? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. So as much as I think this is a good arrangement, I'd rather see you do the deal where you get a chunk of the upside, more of like a partnership. You know, well, can I um, clarify, Barbara, is there any like, are you guys, do you have a pain point that he's solving? Like, is it a time crunch that you have to get out of this payment or, or something else where uh, this is really weighing you down? I mean, it would kind of stink because we are currently renting now. So um, we're going to be paying for two houses, one being vacant, obviously. Um, but it's that would be the only slight pain point. Okay. Yeah, but it's okay. it's a it's a crazy market. It's fish town. Right. Uh, You're not if, a if this guy, if this yeah. guy flaked, he could. You guys could lease that place or sell it. 
like literally snap of your fingers, man. So I would, what, how much, and you want to rent it for 2,500 bucks a month? Uh, yeah. That's what's your cost basis? That's what's your, what's your mortgage payment? The mortgage is, um, 2150. Okay. Um, all right. I would approach this guy. If he's your friend, your boyfriend's buddy, I'd approach him as a partner and say, my here's the deal. What? My buddy. I can be buddy. My yeah. buddy. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, your buddy. So I would go to your buddy and say, listen, have I got a deal for you, my friend? I'm going <laughs> to cut the rent back. Uh, I'll, I'll cut the All rent right. back to like 22, 23, right above my cost. Here's okay. my mortgage payment, my PITI. Any maintenance, any taxes, whatever, we split it. You know, anything above the above the housing cost. So if we have to send a handyman in there for 200 bucks, I'll kick in 100, you kick in 100, okay? Mm -hmm. um, right? I want a baseline number of 450. Anything above that, we split at some negotiated percentage. You know, maybe you guys get a heavier, uh, this is more complicated, but maybe it's sliding scale. Maybe any any dollar above 450, between 450 and 475 gets split like 60 40 and anything above 475 goes to 60 40 his way mm -hmm. right okay. to where you guys get the, the, the more money he gets for the property the more money he makes but you guys still get a ride along the whole way up right okay, okay? now yeah. it should be said right now i am making this shit up right now okay <laughs> <laughs> Right. This is not, this is a tactic that I've not heard of before. This is like this is coming out of an area down here. Okay. Um, Got it. And, and that, but that's kind of sometimes the best, most creative financing deals do. This is just called creative financing. Wow, came to you, Matt. I hear you. I I pull out out of my hair. Hair. Like, Matt'll, Matt'll pull this out of his ass. Right. Um, <laughs> So no, it's, it's, this is creative financing 101 guys. This is about finding win-win arrangements. Uh, when you're working with wholesalers, creative, creative sellers, creative buyers and stuff like that. And I try and find win-wins, right? And so I would, I would snap back a little bit more of your, of your baseline, of your baseline numbers, meaning like the, the minimum number you need to get in rent and the minimum number that you need to get in, um, in sell price on the property. Okay. Um, and if he says no, I know he's your buddy, right? But if he says no, it's because he knows that he can liquidate this joint for six twenty-five. I know it's probably not true, but you might want to talk to two more realtors before you engage in this deal, um, and you might want to um, uh, just try and negotiate something. Justin, what do you think? Uh, that that you just what you just ended on was exactly where I was going to go. Is I want more than one realtor's opinion on the price of this property because for this guy to to he's he's an investor in the area. He knows what that house is going to go for. Two-year-old house. You know, Matt's saying that he sold properties in that in that neighborhood, that area for a lot more. Uh, my feeling is this is this house is worth more than than you think it is, and so okay. I would want multiple uh, opinions on the value of that house. Um, so so get that, and then you know, okay. then you can run the numbers and see. You know, this seems like a, a nice way for your buddy to make some money, for you to make some money. You don't have to go through a realtor, um, but you know, you should consider all the options. Yeah. So what are you going to do with the sales proceeds? That's the next question. So now you and your boyfriend are going to walk out of here. And by the way, when Liz and I, when Liz and I, who have been married to now for 15 years, were dating, we were buying rental properties with each, with each other too. So totally cool. So you guys are going to be walking out with like, I don't know, 80, 90 grand and maybe some icing on the cake too, on top of that, if you do, if you negotiate a good partnership with this guy. So, so now what with the money? I want to reinvest and he also wants to reinvest. In what? Real estate. No, I get that. I know you're not going to go buy a Bitcoin, but I mean, real you, real uh, properties. I'm going to buy, my, I'm gonna buy myself a mobile home park, right? And I'm buy myself <laughs> a I do, do, do you, I guess as long as you and your boyfriend have thought of it. And what's great is because it's not the the tax implications of it. It's not going to be money burning a hole in your pocket. Uh, do y'all already have your housing situation set up at your new spot? You've got a new place you're renting. Yes, we have a new rental that we're currently in. This is the beautiful common area. I know. I was going to say that it's very lofty looking yeah. of you. It's a, probably an old factory conversion or something like that, right? I yeah. think it is actually. I'm pretty yeah. sure. It is. That's very yeah. Philly. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So you've got 90 grand and then you've got uh, options. You know, you're going to buy, you're going to go the single, small, duplex, multifamily route, maybe in Philly where you know, or any, any thoughts on that? I mean, we haven't discussed it super thoroughly. Obviously we want to stick it back into real estate somehow. Um, 
I have kind of been dabbling in wholesale with no luck. So I figured maybe we would, maybe I would come across something that made sense numbers wise for us to keep. Well, if I could offer it up, I would go to a growing gentrifying part of Philly, like call it like your German town, your brewery town, something like that, okay. and go and buy a three, a two, three or four unit small multi on low money down, right? Uh, on an FHA and even maybe even a two, an FHA with a 203K uh, construction loan blended in and okay. go and buy it and renovate it and then rent it out and then live there for like a year and then flip it or do it again and do, I, I would house hack uh, with your boyfriend. If, if y'all want to live together like that, then I would do, and I would make your homestead, your rental part of your rental business. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? My two cents. That's what I would do. If you guys like living in Philly, if you're already living in the city, uh, might not find, find what I'm talking about in Fishtown cause Fishtown's already gone like that, but you could go right across the L to, to Kensington and find, find a, a beater, two family, three family, four family and live in it and clean it up, fix it up, straighten it up and then get rid of it. And then either refinance it and get rid of it or uh, move on to the next one after a year or two. Okay. I like that. I'm definitely going to make him watch this video and uh, <laughs> get him on board. Thanks. Nice. Get him on board. All right. well, cool. After you sell whatever the outcome is on the lease option, you'll have to come back and get us an update on what you did. And then we'll yeah, have the next the Monday where because we talk about the next deal. Barbara, thank you for being here. I thank sure appreciate you being a part of the Metrish Monday program. Thanks, yeah. Barbara. See you soon. See you soon. Man, that's great. Yeah, that's man. Great. I love the creative financing stuff. I love the <laughs> sliding scale option that you mentioned that you just... I just so that's great. I mean, your interests are aligned, right? Because yeah. that puts the most uh, upside for this guy if he can really produce and get up over that, you know, four seventy five number. The more he gets, the more the more goes in his pocket, and then that's better for her too. So that's that's yeah. the definition. And you make it a win for him by dropping his cost basis by yeah. dropping like, hey, listen, your rent. I'm dropping your rent and your the the, the your your strike price with me. Yeah. Uh, so it's a win win, right? So great. Uh, guys, one more time, send you send an email over to help me at derosagroup.com. That is help me at derosagroup.com. If you want to sit and wrap with Justin and I here on the Mentorship Monday program, Justin, my friend, enjoy the rest of your Labor Day, my friend, for all the hard labor you do. Enjoy uh, <laughs> and enjoy your Labor Day, man. You too. Have a good one, man. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great, profitable week.